Now, we go to the next subtopic which is material. When we talk about material, it can be divided into several categories based on the electrical conductivity. But in this subtopic, we will focus more on dielectric material. Well, the conductivity defines the material. So the value will determine whether the material is a conductor, semiconductor, as well as dielectric. You have to know the difference between these three different material. For conductor, it can conduct electric currents or specifically conduction current. For semiconductor, it can conduct a little current, but by having the process of doping with other material, such as the pentavalent or trivalent material, it also can conduct a good electricity. And the third category is dielectric, or well known as an insulator, where the electric current cannot pass through this kind of material. Well, for the good conductor, basically it has a high sigma, as high as 10 power of 7 Siemens per meter. For example, we have silver, gold, copper and carbon. For low sigma, as low as 10 power of minus 12 Siemens per meter, this is dielectric. For example, we have glass as well as quartz. Now we go to the atomic structures of dielectric. Dielectric has many electron valence. Normally, it has at least 5 and above. So the electron will tightly bound to the nucleus. It's very difficult to be donated to um, another atom. What happens when dielectric material is applied with an external electric field? Since electrons are tightly held to atoms, so we can say that ideally the sigma is zero for dielectric material. So no current will even flow in the material. So practically, um, it has a very little current. But even though the sigma is equal to zero, but the electric field still exists inside the dielectric. That is something that you have to remember. Well, for perfect dielectric, as I mentioned earlier, the sigma is equal to zero. Therefore, the current density also is equal to zero. That means no conduction current can flow inside dielectric. However, you have to remember that E field is not equal to zero inside dielectric. Okay, this is uh, the configurations of atom. When we have no electric field applied to the atom, so the atom is natural. Okay, we have electron and uh, proton here. However, when we apply the external E field, what happens is the charge will rearrange in position. But still, the atom are natural because the process to lose or receive electron is not happen in this condition. Now, we will discuss about the effect of the external electric field on our dielectric material. For the first case, we have dielectric material, but we don't have the external electric field. When we take a sample, this sample represents the microscopic view. It contains many atoms 
And when we take the sample of one atom, basically this atom consists of the positive charge at the nucleus and also the negative charge at the valence shell. Because for dielectric, it has many electron valence. So when we have no external electric field, basically there is no effect on atomic structures. However, when we have external electric field, what happens? Basically, it can polarize the atom and molecule by distorting the center of the cloud and the locations of the nucleus. Similarly, we take a sample of microscopic view what you can see here, so the atoms start to rearrange. We have the couple of positive and a negative pair of charge. It depends on the direction of the external field. When we have the external field coming from these directions, so basically the negative charge will attract to these parts. Okay, and the positive charge will move away. Alright, from here we can see that electric polarization vector exists. We have P, which is equal to N P. This is a capital P and this is small p. This small p basically um, represents the dipole moments. The dipole moments show the strengths of the polarizations. And the unit of electric polarization vector is Coulomb per meter square. This parameter is important for dielectrics. When we see the microscopic view, what you can see is we have nucleus consists of positive charge. And then the negative charge will be arranged here based on the external field. That's why we have the pair of positive charge and negative charge. So the dipole moment occur and it can create electric polarizations. Now we will discuss about the bound charge densities. Please remember that the bound charge density only involves for dielectric material. Now let's consider the dielectric being polarized by the applications of external field. This is our dielectric materials and we have the external field coming from these directions. We can see that the dipole moment appear inside the atoms and this the polarization too. Then under these configurations, two types of bound charge appear. The first one we call as a bound surface charge density and the symbol is rho sp. We can determine the rho sp by dot product the polarization vector with the unit vector normal to the surface of interest. Let's say I want to find the rho sb at the top of the substrate. And we can see here that the, the surface facing upward. For another rho sb, which is located at the bottom surface, so we have the n going downwards. So this will create a two different rho sb. Basically, rho sb only exists on the surface of the electric. Alright, so when we have the applied E field coming from these directions, so the negative charge will accumulate at this surface while the positive charge 
will go to the opposite surface. Next, we have the second type of bound charge, which is bound volume charge density. And the symbol is rho VB. The rho VB can be determined by negative diversion of polarization vectors. And the unit is coulomb per meter cube. So, basically, the rho VB may exist inside the dielectric material. Or maybe it's not appear at all. So, this is the conclusion from our discussion just now, which is inside the electric, we have bound volume charge density. On the surface, we have bound surface charge density. And this is how you can determine the rho SB and rho VB. These two parameters is very important and always asked during tests. You can see the relationship between the bound charge and also the charge system that we learned before, which is the rho S for the charge density, which is equal to D dot N. Here we have P dot N. And then here we have the volume charge density divergent of D, here we have negative divergent of P. So, the form is almost similar. From previous, we have identified the assistance of bound surface charge density, rho SB, and bound volume charge density, rho VB, due to polarizations. Let us apply the Maxwell equations in polarized dielectric to find the electric field. Beginning from divergent of D equal to divergent of epsilon naught E equal to rho V, where this is the charge density um, in free space. Due to the assistance of rho VB, we have to alter a little bit on our equation, which is the diversion of epsilon naught E is equal to rho V plus rho VB. From definition of rho VB, diversion of epsilon naught E is equal to rho V minus divergent of P. Further manipulations. So we bring the divergent of P to the left hand side and this part is equal to rho V. Hence, D is equal to epsilon naught E plus P. So we can see that our D have the function of polarization due to the material. Here, this is the conclusion of our polarization of electric field in a dielectric material where polarization is equal to D minus epsilon naught E. You have to remember that D is always the same regardless of the medium. But what the change is at the E field. So by using this formula, we can find what is the polarization vectors. So this is E. E here is external source. D equal to epsilon E and epsilon equal to epsilon R, epsilon naught, depend on material. Now we go to the effect of polarization on field. 
previously in free space d is equal to epsilon not e presently in polaris polarized dielectric d is equal to epsilon not e plus p like we just discussed before for some dielectric p is proportional to e where p equal to psi e epsilon not e where psi e is known as electric susceptibility Therefore, when we change p equal to psi e as a not e into these expressions, so what you obtain is 1 plus psi e can be changed into what we call excellent r, relative permittivity. And excellent not excellent r later on is equal to epsilon. So, the conclusion, D equal to excellent E inside dielectric material. You have to differentiate between three different epsilon, which has, we have, the first epsilon is permittivity of the dielectric. Epsilon not is permittivity of the free space, while Excellent R is relative permittivity. That means the permittivity of the dielectric relative to the free space. Alright. So here is excellent equal to excellent not excellent R and excellent R equal to 1 plus psi E equal to excellent divided by excellent not. So please um, remember this. Next about dielectric breakdowns. Even we know that dielectric cannot conduct electricity, but what happens if we apply the external E field into dielectric, which has a very strong in magnitude? When dielectric is exposed to the extreme E field, Electrons break free from atoms, then produce leakage currents. So the device can be broken or not functioning. 